Before we move on to part six, let me say that this episode will rely less on historical context and become more of an imagination exercise, since at this part where it basically is a millennium and a half since Rome fell, it's going to be practically impossible to suggest with evidence that a certain event would happen. Since that's the case, this is the second to last episode of the Rome series, and part 7 will be the summary and conclusion. So now let's begin with Rome part 6. Rome's Industrial Revolution would be somewhat like Europe's in the early 1850s, except Rome's would most likely occur in the early 1500s, and this is just an estimate. Since Rome's enlightened view collapsed when the empire did, technology didn't evolve much during the Middle Ages, nor was there a united front in education and literature. In a Rome-controlled Europe, the feudal system never would have existed, and there would have been at least more of an emphasis on education across the Western world. This would help Rome's technological advancements incredibly and help their society grow a lot faster than Europe did in our timeline by at least 200 years. It's difficult to know how this industrial revolution would begin, or if it would happen in the similar way it began in our timeline. Odds are a bountiful use of resources would spur the growth of technology, and the call of war would pressure Rome to keep inventing new war technology. However, Rome basically harnesses steam and coal power, adopts guns as the main weapon which drastically changes the Roman military, and creates a faster way of travel across Europe. China eventually begins to compete with Rome as they see this technological growth as a threat to their trade system across the world. China and Rome would be massive trade partners, yet both of their technological abilities would be kept a closely guarded secret. Eventually the tech on both sides would leak and they would become great competitors with similar technology. The world would be split between Rome and China and a sort of medieval cold war. Their relationship would be reminiscent of today's America and China. The technological growth would greatly change the wars in Rome. Rome would still use the same battle strategies but with new technologies. This would create massive casualties in war, similar to the American Civil War in World War I. Old tactics and new technology would create carnage in usually small wars. With this new technology, Rome and China rapidly expand and begin to invade their neighbors. Rome invades Sub-Saharan Africa, Iceland, Russia, and Iran. China invades Korea, Japan, Philippines, and the East Indies. No knowing if they would be successful taking these places, but if there was a massive technological advantage, some empire would invade their neighbors. The map could look something like this. After a couple hundred years of quelling the native populations and establishing dominance, both Rome and China begin to explore beyond their borders. By this time, both empires would know of the Americas, yet because of such massive competition with neighbors and each other, neither empire wanted to waste resources expanding. Since they would have expanded far enough, they would set their sights on the Americas. Except this time they would be in more of a fight. Since Rome and China would have established small outposts in the Americas by 1300, the Old World diseases would have ravaged the native populations. But after 400 years of regrowth, the natives would be in a better position to fight. As well as adopting Chinese and Roman technology into their own, such tribes like the Iroquois would heavily fight back Roman aggression. This would make taking the Americas tougher and would probably stop most expansion in the center entirely. There would be enough resources on the shores that the Romans and Chinese would not have to expand into the center of the continent like the United States did, and the Great Plains tribes would be generally left unaffected, perhaps forming their own nations. The Aztecs' fate would be iffy. Maybe the Romans would wipe out the empire since it would be not Roman, or maybe they would make a partnership with it and not focus on Mexico. It's hard to say. For the general American conquest, I think Rome and China would be less about expansion for expansion's sake. It would be more of a quest of exploration. Since the competition would be in the Old World, where the Romans and Chinese would compete over Central Asia and quell native neighbor populations, there would be less emphasis on the Americas. Although, the Russians, Norwegians, Koreans, and Japanese would be heavily oppressed across the world. This is the furthest in time we're going to go with the Roman series. We've reached the limit for there to be much historical context in our scenarios. 
Of course, we'll never know how exactly the world would be if Rome survived, but it's good to have at least some historical context to back up upon. We'll let our audience finish this scenario. How do you think the world would be today if Rome was still around? Can't wait to see your scenarios and ideas. Next is the last part of the Rome series, part 7, in which we'll talk about Rome's influence on our world today and the significance of its history. Until then, like us on Facebook, subscribe if you have not done so. This is Cody from the Alternate History Hub. Thank <music> you.